Hey guys, I'm Rick and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today we're going to answer the question of what is the best cooler for your Ryzen processor if you want to spend $20 or less. Uh, as you can see on the table here, we have a lot of cooler. We have, you know, seven different coolers, uh, starting from the stock Ryzen coolers, going all the way up to the Cooler Master Hyper T2. And we actually have quite a few deep cool uh, coolers here. We have the Ice Blade 100. We have the Ice Edge Mini FS. We have the Gamax 200T and the Gamax 300. So um, the reason there's so many deep cool products is honestly, um, by the way, we tested more, I tested more coolers than this. If you look up there, there's like four or five extra coolers. Uh, they're just not gonna be in the video at all because all of them actually performed weaker than the new uh, AMD stock coolers. So it wasn't even worth talking about them. Uh, just, you know, these are really all the coolers I could find from reputable, ma reputable manufacturers. So I didn't go get the eBay like $10 coolers that you can buy and whatnot that I could find that were under $20 and that after testing actually performed better than the stock coolers. We're gonna talk about the stock coolers a little bit and they're gonna be on the graphs for comparison's sake. Um, but, you know, honestly, I wanna start by that. It's, it's my honorable mention. For the first time, I'm really glad that there's a manufacturer putting stock coolers out there that are actually worth something. Uh, meaning that basically, um, you know, before, this generation of AMD, unless for you know special edition models, you would be getting stock coolers that were worth nothing. You couldn't overclock at all on them. And for the full first time, AMD has included stock coolers that you can actually start overclocking. You can't maybe push out a max overclock on these, but you can get a decent, you know, decently overstock with either of these two coolers with the Ryzen processors. So these coolers are actually going to be in my honorable mention and you know, for anyone like that really is on a tight, tight budget, if you have one of these coolers included with your AMD processor, don't be scared to do a little bit of basic overclocking. You can probably get decent extra performance out of your CPU and you don't actually have to drop any money at all. So um, before we get to the numbers, I'm just gonna explain really quickly the methodology. So I always, I've tested all these coolers on a Ryzen 3 1200 processor. The processor is overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz with 1.3 volts. It's actually not the max overclock that that processor can hit, but it's a decent overclock that everyone should, well, most people should be able to hit with their Ryzen 3 chips, uh, unless you got really unlucky in the silicon lottery, uh, but most people will be able to hit 3.9. So I didn't want to test any higher than what most people on the market will probably be able to get with their chips. And 1.3 volts is actually a pretty low voltage for one for hitting 3.9. So it's important to know that if your chip has to push a little extra, uh, all of these coolers will offer probably uh, enough leeway to hit it. Maybe only the Ice Blade 100 and the Ice Edge Mini will be borderline. But basically, uh, let's get to the numbers. So I'm going to pop up the graph on the on the uh, uh, right now on on the video, and we'll be able to see. So uh, ultimately. Pretty much all these coolers performed either equal or better than the Ryzen um, Spire cooler, the one that comes with the Ryzen uh, Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 series. Well, uh, higher than the Ryzen 5 1400 actually, because the 1400 has the stealth cooler, the smaller edition. So, um, you know, ultimately all these, as I said, all the coolers perform decently. Um, and all the graphs, by the way, are in delta temperature. So it's the difference between the ambient temperature and what we got on the coolers. The best performers out of the group um, were really the Gamax 300, 200, and the Cooler Master Hyper T2. However, uh, we're going to look at a second series of charts, and then we'll, we'll look overall, you know, what each cooler can be used for and which will be my picks for you guys. So uh, the second thing we're gonna look at really quick is the noise. So if you look at the noise charts, the AMD coolers were actually the quietest coolers out of all of them. Uh, then it was followed by actually the two, the two Gamax series, so the 300 and the 200, because they ultimately have the same fan. You'll see a one decibel difference on the graph, but that's probably just test variants or maybe just a small 
a manufacturing difference between the two fans, but ultimately it's the same model of fan on the two coolers. Uh, the noisiest was actually the Cooler Master Hyper T2 out of the bunch. Um, okay, so now if we have to choose with these coolers, um, basically uh, the Ice Edge Mini and the Ice Blade 100 is only a choice for someone who has the Stealth Cooler. Okay, if you have the AMD Ryzen Spire, you're actually only getting approximately the same performance out of these two coolers. So it's really, in my opinion, a bad buy for anyone that has the Ryzen Spire. Uh, and even if we look at someone who has the Ryzen Stealth, ultimately these two perform the same as a Ryzen Spire approximately, but the price difference is so small between the other three models that I really can't recommend these two to anyone. I would, because basically this one is, you can get between 12, 10 and 12 bucks, and the Ice Age between 12 and 15 bucks. However, you can get the Gamax 200 always at 15 or lower, and you can get the Gamax 300 at, at 20 bucks or lower. And you can get the Hyper T2 even at like between, somewhere between 15 and 20 generally. So for if, if you're really so tight on your budget that $3 makes a difference, then with all, if you have the Ryzen Stell, go for one of these two. But if you really can spend the other extra three bucks, it's really worth upgrading to one of the other three models. So we're gonna move them to the side really quick. And we're gonna look with the three finalists. So basically, you have the Gamax 300 and the Hyper T2, they perform exactly the same, okay? Basically, you're getting almost the exact same temperatures. Everything is very similar in the performance. The only difference is actually the noise. The, the Cooler Master makes a, a lot more noise than the Gamax. Eight decibels higher when you're in the 40 to 50 range is a huge difference to your ear. Because in those high volumes, eight decibels is a lot more perceptible than when you're at lower volumes. Uh, you can look it up online in the different charts and they'll explain to you why. But basically the higher you go, the more every extra decibel will, will sound louder to your ear. So ultimately, uh, the Hyper T2 gets eliminated as the best choice under 20 because you have a similar cooler performing the same, but at basically uh, you know the same price, but a, a lot lower noise. So unfortunately, the Hyper T2 gets eliminated. Now, we're left with two coolers. And ultimately, between these two coolers, uh, the Gamax 300 is the better performer, but by a very slight margin. And on average, you pay 25% more for it to get 6% more performance. Uh, so I know those numbers sound bad, but ultimately, I would say it depends which processor you have. If you have a Ryzen, on anything under a Ryzen 5 1600, I would say go with the Gamax 200. The reason why is it'll give you enough room to overclock probably to the maximum you'll need to hit the highest clocks on your CPU and you'll save about 25% of the money. So you don't actually need to go get a Gamax 300 if you're running a Ryzen 5 like 1500X, 1400 or a Ryzen 3 processor. The Gamax 200 is the best choice for you in my opinion. However, if you're running a Ryzen 5 1600 or a Ryzen 7, and I would say it's a foolproof choice, go with the Gamax 300. The extra 25% on the money, it'll give, it, it's only a slight better performer, but at the same time, uh, something that is not perceptible in, this, in the numbers, and I spoke about this in the review of the Gamax 300. By the way, if you wanna see reviews for each one of these individual coolers, they're all on my channel. I'll link them in the description down below. Uh, but yes, yeah, getting back, for, so for the Gamax 300, uh, basically there's it's more stable at high temperatures. Uh, whenever you're, I do my temperature tests with average temperatures and you'll see spikes. Your temperature will spike a little higher and then the cooler will bring it back down. And with the 200, those spikes were a lot more frequent and would last a little longer. With the Gamax 300, there were a lot less spikes and they would last a lot, they would be a, last a lot shorter. So if you're going with a Ryzen 5, 1600 or higher, or a Ryzen 7, go with the Gamax 300. And ultimately, I'll be honest with you, if you're going with a Ryzen 1700X or 1800, 
uh, I would you can try with a Gamex 300 but I would skip this entire line of coolers and I would wait I'm actually gonna we're gonna continue on our tests I would aim for a cooler between 20 and 30 dollars and honestly if you're spending the money for a 1700 X or an 1800 I'm not sure that the extra 10 bucks will be a problem for you to fit in your budget if it is you can go ahead and try with the Gamax 300 but if you can take the extra 10 bucks and invest it in one of the other coolers that we'll be looking at over the next few weeks. So I'll be coming back with another video, which is the best cooler under 30. It's going to come after we do the reviews of each individual cooler. So keep tuned to the channel and you guys will see that. As usual, a quick shout out. I have a Patreon account down below. So if you want to help contribute directly to the channel, help me get more contact quicker, Pretty much everything donated to Patreon will be reinvested directly into the channel to help us do more builds, get more coolers, get more products in general, graphics cards, all that. Uh, I'll put also my Amazon affiliate links down below if you're interested in buying any of these coolers. Uh, that helps the channel as well. You get your product, it doesn't cost you anything extra and it gives me a quick kickback. So if you know friends or anyone that wants to buy any of these, just you know, you can always send them my Amazon affiliate link, it'll be a pleasure. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer all the questions when I know the answers. And if I don't, I'll try to at least let you know that unfortunately, I don't know the answer to your question. Uh, likes are really appreciated and subscriptions are really loved. And as usual, I hope I see you guys in my next video.